tile pressing machinery was developed in France in Alsace in the 1840s. And the result of that was many tiles were made in more complicated shapes which overlapped to stop the uh, rain being driven in by the wind between the sides or the bases of the, of the tiles. Um, and by the 1850s, the Martin brothers, the Frère Martin of Marseille, were making a tile which became very common. Marseille on the south coast of France was a major exporter of terracotta products all over the world, largely certainly to French colonies, to some extent to South America, India, and in due course to Australia. And the pattern which the Martin brothers uh, developed was taken up by a number of manufacturers in Marseille, up to nearly 20 of them, who agreed to make the same pattern and market them uh, jointly. So these are examples of these French tiles. First of all, uh, looking at the tile, you see that it has a double groove on the side, which means a very good seal against the weather at the sides. And at the end, a bull nose, which overlaps the uh, other tile, and you can see at the top where the bull nose fits into the uh, groove here. So they produce a very good seal, which means you have to have very little overlap, and it's the overlap which makes a roofing material heavy. Now, this particular example is one by, made by Pierre Sacamin of Marseille, um, and it has the brand of the star on it, which is each make has their own special uh, emblem. Um, this one is Antoine Sakama, another Sakama, uh, and his brand is uh, an anchor, which you see here. Um, and this is a particularly prolific company, uh, the Guichard brothers, the Fred Guichard, which have a B as their, as their emblem. And this is these are very widely used in Australia, this particular brand. <coughs> So by 1888, numbers of these tiles were being imported into Australia, uh, mainly by the uh, Rock Company in Melbourne and the Wonderlic Company in Sydney, and they become accepted as the standard Australian tile, and more or less displace all the other varieties. During the early 20th century, makers in Australia began to copy them. And this is an example, this is a broken tile, um, which um, looks very similar and of course if you wanted to sell a tile in Australia you had to um, match the size of the existing French tiles so Australian makers are virtually forced to copy the French pattern but these are not nearly as well made they're nearly twice as heavy and they're more brittle but they copy the idea uh, and they include um, similar markings in this case the emblem of a kangaroo here to show it's a locally made tile um, during World War I, French tiles almost dried up, the importation of French tiles dried up, and so Australian-made tiles took over um, from that time onwards. And then they were so popular that the pattern was imitated in other materials like sheet metal, um, cement, although cement tiles um, having to be cast can't be nearly as intricate and complicated, so they're simplified forms, but the principle is the same, and the idea is to try to roughly emulate the impression of the uh, Marseille tile roof, which is so popular. The same double groove you can see down the side um, to stop the water driving in. This example, the Guichard Carvin C, uh, has the B not only on the, the back, um, but on the nose of the, of the tile. Um, when you look at a tile like this, um, you have the, the name of the company, uh, you have the emblem like the B, but also um, little marks here, which are the batch numbers for the particular batch of tiles. They vary from one tile to the, to the other. Um, the little knob here is a place where there's a hole through which wire can go to tie the tile onto the roof battens. Uh, 